Ben Owen, Lee Abbott. Welcome to North Carolina Now. Thank Hi, you. And thank you for having us here today. You have both been working hard on an upcoming event, the 10th Annual Mint Museum Potter's Market yeah. Invitational. And you have come here to give us a preview of what's going to be happening with this year's event. And Lee, give us an overview and the history of this particular show. Well, this is our 10th year. It's a really big year for us. We have over 40 potters coming. It's the 6th of September, which is a Saturday. It's all day. We will have food trucks for food. We will have music mm -hmm. all day. Uh, we will have demonstrations, having people actually sit down on a potter's wheel, if that's what you'd like. And you can get your hands all in the mud and make something and then take it home with you. Oh, that's so awesome. So it's, it's going to be fun all day. Lee, how do you choose the potters who participate in the event? There is a committee that will decide who is uh, perhaps the, the better or the newer or the one with ha maybe a bit different technique. And we also have people low like Ben, who if Ben was not there, we probably wouldn't want to have a potter's market. So there are those that are always represented, but we do want the new talent to be coming in too. So uh, there is a committee, it's made up of three people, and they're people that have been in the business for a long, long time, and they know who's good and who should be there. Ben, as Lee mentioned, you've been involved with the market before. Tell us about your experience with this event and how this venue is different from perhaps some of the other shows you've been involved with. Well, uh, it's been really an honor to be part of the show and, and such a rich uh, history and heritage with the Mint Museum. Uh, the Mint Museum, of course, showcases one of the, one of the best collections in the southeast of pottery. And uh, I've personally been able to go in and see some of the collections and actually see some pieces behind the scenes, even when they're not on exhibit with some of the curators. And it's just a, a wonderful library and resource for us as potters, as well as the public to come in there and to be able to be educated on how pottery was done in the past, but also what we're doing at this great opportunity at the Potter's Market Invitational. We have a, such a wonderful group of talented potters all over our state, and it's really a wonderful blessing but at the same time to be able to showcase those works and to be able to show them in one location like that under a, for a special occasion is really what I believe the Mint has really been able to capture through this. And for potters like yourself, or perhaps as Lee mentioned, some of the newer artists who are mm -hmm. involved with this event, what does an opportunity like this really mean? Well, for many young potters that are just first uh, either going through uh, apprenticeship programs, and we have some several apprentice, apprentices that have worked through potters here in the state, but also through some of the universities that we are so well known here in North Carolina that they've been able to study pottery through the courses and then to seek and uh, choose to do a career in clay. And some of them that have been invited to the Potter's Market Invitational have, have really conveyed influences from not only studying here, but also taking those opportunities to travel to other countries or other states or other places and bring something new and really inviting for the public to come and see. What are the influences? And I think really the key thing, whether it's a young potter that's at the show or a well-seasoned person, is having the opportunity to be able to share that story with the viewers that come and be there. And uh, one person in the ex exhibition this year uh, that I think really stands out, not just from a functional pot pottery standpoint, but also from a sculptural standpoint, is Tammy Brooks. And she makes sculptural work and does uh, designs more, uh, I think her signature thing is more like a rooster or a chicken, but she makes all different types of variations of those and just the story behind them and how she creates them. But, but there's a, yeah, she sent me a photo one time of a, one of her roosters sitting in the car and the passenger seat and she's sitting in the driver's seat ready to take off and that rooster is going on a journey and is going to like the potter's market invitational and maybe meet somebody new at that at that show and take a continuing journey to maybe a possible home in the future and you both have brought in some pieces to share with us some of the things that yeah. folks yeah. can see at yeah. the market yeah. lee tell us about some of these pieces uh the one that you have here by ben is by Donna Craven. Donna Craven is always one of our uh, favorites. Uh, she does beautiful work. 
the things that, that we like about the picture, it would be the design, the classic design, the handle. Uh, she really has a, a wide variety of uh, objects that, that she makes. So mm -hmm. uh, she's always one of our perennial favorites. Oh, and then Ben, you have a couple of your pieces here as well. I brought a few of the newer techniques that I've been discovering and working with the last few years. And so working with more softer colors or more smoother or matte finishes are a really uh, uh -huh. a welcoming thing and being able to explore and try new things. But, uh, but my, my friend of mine, Fred Johnston, that's a fellow potter in the that's Seagrove so area, he does really kind of narrative type pieces and he makes these really wonderful pictures and does a lot of brush work or design work on the surface. So. Uh, and even Jugtown pottery, mm -hmm. the, the picture there, uh, a teapot, teapot made by, uh, by Vernon and Pam at Jugtown. And so pieces like that from functional to decorative really play an important role in our, in our state. And Lee, I have to mention your necklace, which is absolutely beautiful as well. Beautiful? Thank you, thank you. This is Jane Pizer, mm -hmm. and Jane is one of our artists who will be there too. And she's in the Penland School. So mm -hmm. this is just such a fun piece that several of us wanted her different, I guess there would be mm -hmm. called little mm -hmm. dolls. And we, she actually sold out last year. Wow. And she had to mail some of them because they, everyone was saying, oh, but I didn't get one, I didn't get one. And she says, but I can make you one. So we did. Well, Lee, I know our viewers now, they want to know all the logistics, where they need to be, when they need to be there, and how they can get involved with the market. Right, okay, the first thing that you need to do, uh, we'd love for you to do is, of course, you can buy your ticket online, but you can also buy your tickets on the uh, day of the show. It starts at 9 a.m. You can do the preview of the market, but you can't actually go in and start purchasing until 9.30. Uh, it will run until four in the afternoon. The parking is free. Uh, there's ample parking. There's food to purchase. Uh, you can really spend most of your day. It's in a park-like setting. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's Randolph Road. You know, there are now two Met Museums in Charlotte. And if people go to your website, can they and get yes, more information? And yes. what would that address be? Uh, it would be the Dell Home, either the, the Dell Home Service League or just the Met Museum uh, Service. Uh, no, actually, it would be more like the Met Museum, either Randolph Road or Uptown. Wonderful. And uh, the directions are easy. We can give you directions. We can give you more instructions if you go to either the website. We're also on Facebook. Uh, well, it sounds a, like a wonderful event. Yes. And Lee and Ben, thank you so much for sharing all the information yeah. about it with us. Thank, thank you, you for the opportunity. Yes, thank you. to be here. We yeah. appreciate it.